Hi, good afternoon and welcome. We are here in studio today talking sports with Val and it is Friday and Val, oh, we don't have anything to do tonight. Ooh. Um, I, I can almost imagine where you want to start the program off, but I'll let you uh, go ahead and do your intro. Congratulations to Zoe Seward, the freshman at the University of Southern Indiana, finished fourth place in the Ohio Valley Conference cross country meet last week, ran 21-22 over, that's, six, that's a 6K race. Yeah, yeah, it's it's an extra K mm -hmm. from what they uh, they run in high school, and that's a really good time. Right, and for a freshman to be the number one runner on your Division One NCAA cross country team, that's pretty special. What Zoe's doing is she's we knew she was good, but she's having a spectacular freshman season. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty amazing. She came she came out of nowhere and uh, she won her first race right of uh, of the year. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it's pretty amazing. So uh, congratulations uh, to Zoe. So yeah. not quite where I thought you were going to go. Okay, well that, the other thing is, you know, Bob Knight passed away yeah. the other day, and it, it's it's amazing. I mean, I don't think I would be here if not indirectly for Bob Knight. I mean, my dad took me to a Bob Knight speech at the Genesis Convention Center in Gary when I was nine. I mean, I was, I couldn't get enough of IU basketball. I mean, they won the national championship in 1981 when I was seven. And it was just like, I thought that just happened every year. Hmm. I mean, that was me becoming a sports fan and me becoming a basketball fan. And, and it just like, I, I couldn't I couldn't I mean Isaiah Thomas was a superhero to me, mm -hmm. and on top of that he it was he was like he wasn't tall. He was six one. I mean he might as well have been five five one compared to all I mean these, these gigantic guys he was playing, and then it was all it all made so much sense. It all it all it all was like oh I see why they why, why they're winning. They're just so much more like prepared and disciplined it, it was just like and you know and I remember like they were playing LSU in the final four and they were down at the half by three and my dad was like they'll be fine they're gonna win this game and mm. he was right mm. and it was like yeah I mean this it was just it was just like it, it was just beyond what I they were just like superhuman to me and and it was all this coach and it was all this he was orchestrating it and um, it was just amazing to me how good they were. And then I remember like the, and then like two days later, President Reagan was shot and it was like, they might not play the game tonight. Hmm. It's like, are they going to cancel the game? And I just remembered, and then they did play the game and it was just like, well, they had to play the game. Like, and it was like, now looking back, it was like, you know, again, I was seven. Yeah. It was like, oh, Looking back, it was like, why did they play the game? The president was shot that day. Hmm. But they played the game, and it was, I was just, uh, you know, I, 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 I think I even sent him a fan, Bob Knight a fan letter when I was eight. Like, and I, I had diagrammed my own play. Like, <laughs> and and those, yeah, I mean, it, it just, uh, not just a basketball fan, but a sports fan. I mean, I, I think I knew what I, what I, what I had wanted to do, and then I got to meet, you know, I, you know, I. Going to IU was, for journalism school, that was, in a lot of ways, it was a dream come true. And then I got to meet Bob Hamill, and, I again, I, I didn't put two and two together, and he was the guy who wrote all those stories for the Bloomington Herald Times. And I got to meet Bob Hamill. You know, he's still Mr. Hamill to me. And, yeah, it, it, yeah I mean, uh, I've, got, I've got to live my dreams here, mm -hmm. and, it, and I just happened to land in red. I just needed to find a landing spot, and Rochester, Indiana, happened to be the place. Yeah. But um, my love of sports began loving IU basketball and loving those Bob Knight coach teams. Mm -hmm. That he was a complicated man was just uh, it was it was it was worth talking about. But if you read and if you read what Bob Hamill wrote in the Indy Star, I mean, yeah, he wrote about his Bob Knight's temper. But he also wrote about so many other things about him that were so interesting, especially about his roots in Bob Knight's roots in basketball, where he learned the game from. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, I, and and I became I became interested in the history of it. And you know, my dad was like, "If you think this team was good, you should have watched the team in 1976." And then it was just like, 
all all of this like sports history. I just wanted to know everything mm-hmm. at that point. Mm-hmm. And and here I am. Yeah. Uh, and we're I, talking about Audrey Bollinger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a post from uh, Peggy Arquette, which was she was the Culver uh, uh, PE teacher for a long time, and she was at IU in. 74 I think was her first year and she had Bob Knight as a professor at one point and then of course she was still there and you know when they won the the championship then in 76 so mm-hmm. um you know it just it's just neat and I I don't admit this very often but I actually grew up in an IU family so mm-hmm. until I you know got on the right track and and went to Purdue and everything I was kind of an IU fan and you know that '87 team was kind of that same way with me, with with you and the '81 team. You know it was the same thing. You know Steve Alford and mm-hmm. you know Keith Smart and all those guys. It was it was kind of the same thing for me too there. So yeah, yeah. and it, then I got to go to IU as a student and as an undergrad. I saw I, you know I was there when they went to the Final Four in 1992. I mean that was, I mean and you know you're you're at the games and you you're at Assembly Hall and you you know you're sitting up in the balcony which is just the ultimate no- nosebleed section i mean they mm-hmm. they look like ants playing mm-hmm. and then he w- you know he would walk out onto the court you know like two minutes before game time and everybody would kind of it was kind of like watching the conductor come out to conduct a symphony it was like mm-hmm. everybody kind of held their breath and then he would he would get mad and he would maybe yell at a guy and then the, the then the crowd would kind of or would yell at a ref or would yell at a kid and the crowd would hold their breath again <laughs> it, it it's nothing quite like it yeah. Um, it's nothing quite like it. And, um, yeah, and I think you're seeing, like, how, like, a lot of individual people, whether it's, like, Dan Patrick or or Mike Lupica or Jay Billis, have been talking about how their relationships with him. And, I mean, it was just this very, it was just very compelling to me. Mm-hmm. Just very compelling. I, I remember my freshman year at Purdue, I was the same way. I had nosebleed seats at, at Mackey. And, mm-hmm. you know, when IU came to town and when Bob Knight walks out with his red sweater on, you know, it's obviously a huge contrast, you know, the black and gold. And yeah. all of a sudden here's this big red sweater walking mm-hmm. out and the booze. And yeah. it was it was just a pretty neat event. And it's, it's weird because, you know, we were down at Frankfurt for the mm-hmm. semi-state uh, Saturday for uh, girls volleyball. And I was talking with Jeff Brooke as we were walking in there, you know, about obviously Blue Chips mm-hmm. was filmed there at, yeah. uh, at Case Arena. And he said, well, I was, a, I was an extra in Case Arena when they were doing the filming. Uh-huh. And when Bob Knight walked out, they you were directed to boo, you mm-hmm. know, because obviously he was a bad character in that movie. Yeah. And they said it took him four takes before anybody would boo Bob Knight walking out. I said every, he walked out and everybody cheered. <laughs> like, wait a minute, we got to do this again. He walked out and everybody cheered. And mm-hmm. So it took him four times before they finally talked everybody into actually booing Bob Knight as he walked out of the arena in that movie. Yeah, so. yeah. Yeah, my brother and I were talking on the phone. We were talking about college basketball just mattered back then. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. It, uh, you didn't You didn't it, have one and dones. Yeah, it's just it just different now. Mm-hmm. And... and it it mattered who won, mm-hmm. and those IU Purdue games that I went to were just amazing. I mean, I've never been anything like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, and it was just this, you know, typical reaction when Gene Cady would walk out. But mm-hmm. I mean, there was this grudging respect too oh, yeah. to Gene. Yeah. And then I got to interview Gene Cady at, when he spoke at um, the Moose here in Rochester mm-hmm. um, for the uh, I forget who was he was speaking, it, but yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, and I mean it was that was just so ama- yeah those games were just so amazing. It just mattered who won, and um, yeah, I, I was hooked, and here I am. Yeah, well, I suppose we ought to talk a little bit about our local sports, huh? Sure. Okay. Sure, because um, I mean, I, I you know again, and we realize that that passion that you have is that other people have passion for their teams too, and you yeah. you respect that. Yeah. Well, let's start off last Friday. Unfortunately for the Rochester Zebras on the road at LCC, they would fall short to the Lafayette Central Catholic Knights. The final there was 28-22. But uh, let's take a look here. Let's kind of walk through the highlights of this one. And, you know, right out of the gate, LCC, great run back off of the initial kickoff here. And they're in business. Yeah, somebody uh, missed their assignment. Uh, They got out of their lane, thankfully, a 
uh, touchdown saving tackle by Zach Parks, but that was a 72 yard kickoff return by uh, Hardebeck from LCC. And I talked with Ron Schaefer. He said that was that opening kickoff was a big play. He goes, I, I thought we hung tough defensively on that in swing possession, but when they start off at the 25 yard line, yeah, it puts you kind of behind the sticks, so to speak, doesn't it? Yeah, and they do score, and it's seven to nothing. But boy, Rochester comes out, and they their running game was in top form. And this is a 56-yard touchdown run by Alex Deming. Suppinger from Lafayette Central Catholic makes a great effort, gets him by the ankles, but he somersaults in for a touchdown. And that makes it 7-6. to six. And then Rochester would go for two here. And uh, Brant Beck gets in. And Rochester leads 8-7. to seven. And here was the craziest play of the game. The punt snap goes over punter Ray Clayton's head. He runs it down at about the two-yard line. And it's just a weird play. Uh, it looks like uh, you know Xavier Vance hurts his knee. Clayton's able to punt. It's a five-yard punt, and Rochester drives 41 yards for a touchdown with great field position. Deming just goes in off the right side. Two-point conversion attempt would be no good, so that would be fourteen. So make it fourteen to seven. But again, a short drive because of a special teams mistake by Central Catholic. This is just really good coverage, and they throw the ball out of bounds. Rochester led fourteen to seven at the end of one quarter. Uh, this was one of two Rochester turnovers on the night. This was only one, only one of two Rochester pass attempts on the night. That was the only pass attempt that Carson Pollock threw. It was intercepted, but Rochester would get a defensive stop. That was nearly a pick six by Colton Fervita. This is a really nice punt return by Dylan Hook. 24 yards. Uh, took it from the 15 out to the 39. Here's the other pass attempt, and it wasn't by Pollock, it was by Fervida. This was on a third and 16 play. Central Catholic was called for pass interference on the pass intended for Dylan Hook. That's a 15-yard penalty. Yeah, I think it went from third and 17 to third and two or third and one, and then Beck gets the first down. So, yeah. And this was the longest run of Carson Pollock's season, 18 yards down to the six. He finished with uh, 10 carries for 37 yards. I talked with Ron Shaver. He said he envisioned Paul carrying, getting about five or six carries. He wound up getting 10. Mm -hmm. And then this is the touchdown. Uh, Brand Beck on fourth and goal from the one, and they get it. That made it 20 to 7. It is. This even, uh, I think, threw off the refs a little bit yeah. there. Paul, Pollock with the keeper on the two point conversion. Yeah, they made it 22 7. And. You know, then Central Catholic would convert a third and 17, and I think that that turned out to be one of the bigger plays. They mm -hmm. get a 19-yard pass on third and 17, and, mm -hmm. you know, Meister was not really known as a pass catcher. He's more known as a running back, and that is just a sensational pass by Bobby Metzger to uh, Clayton. Yeah, the Zebras were up 15 there with just a couple minutes to go in the, in the half, and didn't take uh, LCC much time at all here to get down and... Wide open in the yeah, end zone. Yeah, Clayton in the back of the end zone. Uh, and that made it 22-13. to 13, But the extra point would be blocked by Dylan Hook, so it stayed 22-13 at halftime, which was a big block because that kept it a two-possession game. Mm -hmm. In this first drive of the second half, Rochester went 16 plays. All runs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you talk about... The perfect drive to come out after they LCC had scored at the end of the half, mm -hmm. you took up darn near the whole quarter. Yeah. But unfortunately, you know, they would run into a fourth down here. and Right. I think the longest play in this drive was like six yards. Mm -hmm. It was just a methodical drive. And then fourth and eight, they called timeout. They run a play-action pass, and the pass intended for a Pollock to Fervita uh, fell incomplete. And Central Catholic took over on downs. And they throw down the middle. They get a big gainer to, uh, I think that was Meister.
Good pressure here forces an incompletion. And so they go for it on fourth and eight. Another big pass play. I think, was that Clayton again? And then this is just a great pass and a great catch to Hardebeck in the back of the end zone, and he hangs on for a touchdown. They made it 22-19, and they would tack on the extra point to make it 22-20. I, I, Ron Schaefer was really impressed by Hardebeck. He said, mm -hmm. if, I, he said uh, if, if I had a guy like Hardebeck on my team, I'd throw, him, I'd throw him that deep pass about 50 times and just see if he could run under a few. And then on the next possession, Brant Beck fumbles, so Central Catholic takes over all of a sudden, and they're down by just two. But on fourth and two from the Rochester 46, Central Catholic decides to go for it. And watch what happens here. A great defensive stand. He only gets one, and Rochester takes over and downs the throw in 45. Nice spin move by Ferverda. He would be tackled around the 8-yard line, but a holding penalty would uh, bring it back. But they did gain, a, they did net 3 yards. It's 10 yards from the spot of the foul, so that was, it was actually a first and 7. And there was that weird uh, untimed downplay, which I still don't understand. Yeah, I, at the end I, of the I was third hoping quarter. maybe you had some clarification uh, because I've never heard of that. I mean... The I, only time I've ever heard yeah. of that was when there's a defensive penalty at the end of a at the end game, of a, at the end of a half, half or the end of the game. Yeah. yeah, never, never on an offensive penalty, never, never at the end of the third quarter. I yeah. just, I don't, I don't quite understand that. Boy, Central Catholics, they they just stayed resilient defensively. I mean, you know, you saw that 56 yard touchdown run by Deming in the first half, but. Again, it was just really more of a methodical a game as far as the rushing attack. And again, Xavier Vance was out of this game, and he hurt himself on that weird punt play. Mm -hmm. They would try a running play on fourth and seven. They wouldn't get it. Um, then the first play, the next drive, um, Metzger runs for five yards. Wesley Meadows makes the tackle, and then this, it's a fake screen or a fake swing pass, and then they throw the ball deep. Great catch by Clayton. One man misses a tackle, and he is going to turn on the Jets and win the race to the end zone for an 82-yard touchdown. It was a fake swing pass because they thought Rochester had been communicating and calling out the swing passes mm -hmm. and the screen passes. So Coach Nay and his staff said, let's fake, the, let's fake the swing and then throw it deep, and Clayton made a big play. They would attack on the two-point conversion to go up 28-22. And it, I, I think if uh, if what happens right here would have happened about five minutes earlier, that play may not have happened because you can see as this play is developing right here, it just starts pouring. Yeah. I mean, it went from nothing at the beginning of the play to by the end of this play, it is torrential downpour. Yeah. And I, I think if that starts ten minutes earlier – uh, I think Rochester wins this game. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think they have that 86-yard pass play, but it didn't. And then, you know, unfortunately for the Zebras, you know, they they go from 14, or 15 up to to six down, and just uh, for whatever reason, you know, second year in a row they weren't able to score against LCC in the second half. Right. Rochester had 37 offensive snaps in the second half and zero points. That's Hard to believe. I mean, that's mm -hmm. that's almost impossible. Yeah. 30, Thirty-seven offensive snaps to LCC's eighteen, and yet LCC outscored them fifteen to zero. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can see. I mean, at this point, it is just coming down like somebody opened up a five-gallon bucket and dumped it on everybody's heads. It's just crazy. Mm -hmm. And again, they go the. They go for it on fourth and four. They don't get it. And Central Catholic would run out the clock. Just a crazy statistical. We told you about the 
37 offensive snaps to 18 in the second half. Uh, for the game, Rochester had 292 yards rushing and Central Catholic had 10. Mm -hmm. And most of the 10 were on that last drive after the downpour mm -hmm. when they were able to get a first down and run out the clock. Passing yards was 288 to 0. Mm -hmm. I mean, you saw the two passes that Rochester... We've we shown you all of them in that highlight package. Mm -hmm. I guess they did get a pass interference on the second one, but... Yeah, again, Metzger made just some big time passes, and he had two, you know, some big time receivers, and Ray Clayton and Hudson Gutwine. Yeah. Yeah. So unfortunately, the Zebras' season will end or ended there. Yeah. You know, great record or great season for the Zebras, but unfortunately, again, it fall to the uh, Lafayette Central Catholic I, Knights. I did some research. I tried to look up the last time Rochester led a game by 15 points and then lost. Mm-hmm. Not since I've been covering the teams, and that's been I've been to every game since two thousand, every game but one since two thousand four. Yeah, yeah. That's... Uh, they, you know, they had a fourteen nothing lead in the Bell game against Valley in twenty nineteen, wound up yeah. losing thirty four fourteen. But I'm, I'm at a lot. If anybody in our viewing audience remembers a game where they blew a fifteen point lead or larger, um, please tell me. I'd like yeah. to know because it's. But I mean, it was just. But I mean, it's just frustrating. I don't, I don't. I don't know if they played just carelessly. I mean, they. Again, uh, you know, they had a couple chances to, you know, again, Coach Ron Schaefer thought about kicking a, to a field goal on two separate occasions. There was a 36-yard field goal attempt and a 33-yard field goal attempt. He passed on both because, again, Xavier Vance is part of the field goal protection unit. Mm -hmm. So without him, they would have had to put, like, a JV player in there, and he didn't think it was worth the risk, thought maybe uh, it would be it was a higher percentage play to put, you know, to try a running play with Deming or Fervita or Beck. Yeah. Yeah, I I don't uh, I don't argue those calls. I think that you you normally expect to get those first downs, mm -hmm. and they just they just didn't for whatever reason they just weren't able to. And uh, you know just a few things here or there. Obviously that touchdown you know late in the uh, first half, you know where you were up fifteen. If you can if you can stop them there and, and keep that momentum, and then. You know, to drive all the way down, uh, you know, basically eat up the whole third quarter and and not get anything out of it. That that was uh, that was tough. But yeah, you gotta you gotta hand it to these seniors. Yeah, um, man. You know what a what a great group of kids. And you know, obviously freshman year zero and eight. You know, and and right. you saw the potential to the, for this team. And uh, you know, Coach Schaefer comes in their uh, sophomore year and they go twenty two and eight the rest of the way out. You know mm -hmm. what a what a great group of kids, and boy, it's going to be it's going to be hard to to fill those shoes. Trivia question: How many rushing touchdowns did Alex Deming score in his career? I think I'm, I think I don't know if I mentioned that in my article. I if you did, I didn't catch it, but gosh, I don't know. Forty, seventy, seventy. Wow, wow, yeah. And over, I think over forty, well over four thousand yards rushing in his career. Yeah. And I mean this year, and you know this year his carries were down, but his mm. per carry average was up. He went from six point four last year to up to eight point two this year. Yeah, yeah. Deming and Ferv and and Brady Beck, and you know there's just you can go down the list. This is a really great senior class, and it's gonna be it's gonna be tough to fill the shoes. Yeah, and how they learned how they learned the wing T. And then just made it their own and just mm -hmm. made it seem like they had been running it their whole lives. I mean, because yeah. we talk a lot about systems and, oh, yeah, Jimtown, they've been running that since they were in, you know, in diapers or since they first put on a helmet. And, and you know, Southwood runs a spread and they run a spread. You know, if you go back to the, you know, their fifth grade runs a spread. I mean, this was an offense that was just a new system that was put on them and they, mm -hmm. they, got, they got really good at it right away. Yeah. And then on top of that, you know, their defense got a lot better this year. Last year they allowed about 19 points a game. This year down to 13. Mm -hmm. And it was basically, you know, just those three teams that, you know, Valley, Peru, and Central Catholic who really mm -hmm. were able to move the ball in Rochester's defense at all. Yeah. Yeah, it's tough when you get past that LCC game. And, boy, hard to say how far they could have gone. But, unfortunately, they fall. And Right, and that's that's what's really going to hurt because the two way north just is is wide open this year. I think mm. you know we could have said Andrean uh, in previous years, Andrean or boy that Laville team looks unbe or that Eastbrook team looks unstoppable, or even, that, even that, Lures or that Lures yeah. team, or yeah. or and even Pioneer there for. But I mean, 
it, it isn't that way this year. It's, yeah. It really is wide open. This it's a younger. This one of the younger Central Catholic teams you'll see. Mm-hmm. I mean, they were loaded. I mean, they were loaded with sophomores and juniors. I mean, they'll be even better next year. So, mm-hmm. yeah. But two way North is wide open, and I think we're kind of. Lo- and if you look at the sectional finals in the two way North, it's kind of okay. Who's really standing out here? So yeah, yeah. You know, Bremen and Laville. You know, Laville handled Bremen pretty easily in the first game of the year, and. You know, probably will again, and you know, like you said, it's not the Laville team that was uh, there last year. Yeah, they, they're they've got some of the same skill players, but they lost some linemen to graduation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah. So well, you know, Bluff, you know, Bluffton's had a nice year, but I don't think they're they're not scary good. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Well, in uh, in one A sectional action, uh, both Caston and Culver would. Lose their semifinal round games as well. Caston, um, you know, coming off of that, you know, monster win against undefeated North White, another road game. They tra- uh, traveled down to uh, Flora to take on the Carroll Cougars, and they would lose forty-nine to six in that one. But a lot of really good things coming out of the Caston Comets camp this year to look forward to for next year. They've got a lot of really good freshmen and sophomores that will be coming back, a really good eighth grade class that will be coming back, and a different looking conference for them as they come back next year as well. Yeah, and I wrote about that in my article that all these things, I, yeah, you, again, you look at the final record, 2-9, and nine, and they haven't won more than three games in a season since 2013, but I, I'm, I don't think at the same time, I don't think there's ever been more of a sense of anticipation for the next season than right now. It's usually mm-hmm. just whew, the season's over. No, I, I think now there's a lot of forward momentum for this program. And, you know, Landon Rigney catching a 72-yard touchdown pass, that kind of represents it mm-hmm. a- against Carroll, against yeah. a really good Carroll right. defense that had pitched five shutouts this year. Yeah, And the guy who threw the pass was Gavin Molenkoff, who's a sophomore. Right, right. You know, Pete Duvall and, and Grant Yadon, and, and I don't know all the seniors, but I know those two are, are definitely going to be Yeah, Levi, Levi Martin had a big impact on yeah. this team as well. Yeah. Uh, Lance Hanna was a kid who moved in from Rossville. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So they're going to miss them. But and, and Kyle of... Radebush was big, especially. Yeah. Uh, I mean, again, we, we say both ways. They're all, they, they yeah. play basically 14. It's, there are 23 kids on the roster, but they basically have about 14 kids total, mm-hmm. both. For 48 minutes, yeah. Uh, Kyle Radebush was a big factor on defense, mm-hmm. especially. Yeah, and he's graduating also. So I, I can see some good things on the horizon for these comments. Right, I, I think they're gonna, you know, and they're gonna enjoy this new conference. You take Laville and Knox out of the mix, the the two top teams in the Hoosier North this year, and only one loss between them, and that was, uh, you know, Knox beating Laville. So mm-hmm. um, you take those two out, you add North Miami and, and South Central in for the football season. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think it's going to be a it's going to be a fun season next year. Yeah. And I think Caston's going to they're going to have a lot of uh, say in in what happens. I think they're going to be right there in the mix. Right, and you got a veteran coaching staff with Chris Ulrich and Tony Slocum mm-hmm. is Tony Slocum's kind of a defensive uh, guru. Uh, you know, Pat Rombold is upstairs and he's been around for decades. So yeah, it's a veteran coaching staff. I I, I think this is uh, I think there's a lot to be excited about. I mean, they're going to have to continue to work and get in that weight room. Because they're not, you know, it's they don't have a ton of you know 250 pound linemen. I mean, and of course there are a lot of 1A teams in that same boat. But yeah, uh, again, they're they're not going to be outsized either as they as moving forward. I think. Yeah. For Culver, they end their season at one and ten. They lost to the Triton Trojans at home on Friday night after picking up their first win of the season against South Central in the uh, sectional uh, quarterfinal. But uh, it was a tough one, fifty-six to zero, the final score in that one. Right, and basically that the, the tone was set that first minute of the game. Culver's facing, I think, what a third and long. Jonas McEwen's in the shotgun formation, and they miss an unblocked guy who's cut, uh, the Overmeyer, Jaden Overmeyer, who comes in unblocked, and he just drills Jonas McEwen, forces a fumble, and Esai Lemler recovers it in the end zone, and you're down six to nothing, the first minute of the game. Uh, and then you, then you give up the ball again, and then another first, and then on Triton's first offensive snap, and but you know they get the ball in the Culver forty, and then they go forty yards for a touchdown. You're down thirteen to nothing, basically two two and a half minutes into the game, and it was just a long night from there. And then there was just that weird that weird fake punt play with Ethan Binion. It looks like he gets a first down, but the the where they spot the ball was about a yard short of the marker, 
and so they got to give it up on downs. That was that was a head scratcher too. I know Paul on, on the broadcast. He was he was shocked. I was shocked watching it. Mm-hmm. And uh, so that, and that gave Triton another short field. And but having said, but it was it was also fifty six to nothing. I mean yeah. the, that one you know a bad spot on a fake punt that that wasn't the decisive factor. Right, was, right. But boy, Triton they've got some big they got some big kids on that line. Yeah. They're a good size one A team. And they've got some good speed. I mean, yeah, Cole Shively's great, but it's not a one-man show either. Yeah, they're taking on Judson tonight, and I wouldn't be shocked if if Triton doesn't roll again. They they beat him pretty handily in the regular season. Man, they yeah, they're physical. Mm-hmm. I mean, they they yeah. I, I I was I knew they were their their skill position players are fast, but their linemen are physical. Mm-hmm. All right. Um... Anything else on football before we wrap up? Uh, yeah. So again, it's it's just going to be a it's a whole different world with Knox and Laville leaving. I mm-hmm. I really don't know who's the favorite in the Hoosier North next year. It really is uh, going to be interesting. Uh, you know, yeah. could, you know, uh, I guess it would have to be Triton, even though they're grad. But I mean, they're graduating they're shyly, graduating, but yeah. they got, but they got some good guys coming back. So, right, right. Uh, you know. Uh, so I, I'm really curious, uh, yeah, and I think yeah. when I think Winnemac will be. Uh, Winnemac has some graduation right. losses they're going to have to deal with as well. Obviously, everybody always does. You know, Pioneer's losing, you know, Toloza and yeah. Hill. And, I mean, yeah. I think Pioneer will be right there. Yeah, yeah Pioneer too, will be there. And, and who knows? You know, somebody like a Caston or something like that, if they have the right, you know, a good summer. Mm-hmm. And like you said, they get in the weight room and they get some things. Yeah. It's going to be interesting. It's right. going to be really interesting. And, you know, again, North Miami with Hartley Hoover, I mean, they're going to come in and I think they're going to have a, they're going to have a say in it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, because the, you know, I think they were pretty young this year. They got it again. That's another team that where they got again. Got to get in the weight room. Got to get some linemen. Mm-hmm. But I think they've got some skill position players. Yeah, yeah. That would be interesting. You know, Culver's got some returners that are coming back that are pretty young this year that get all, got a lot of experience. You know, can they put some things together? But you know, they're obviously losing Rogers and. Is Binion a senior? Or is he just a junior? He's a junior, so he'll but, be back. But they're losing yeah. Ryan Beam, who's a yeah. you know a, a Brian Brian Beam and Brady Kinderney. Mm-hmm. You know Beam was maybe their best wide receiver, and Kinderney would helped out a lot of the tight end spot. Yeah, you lose Colton Reisner, who's one of your better linemen. So yeah, yeah. I mean, they're, they're, I mean, they don't have they're not graduating a ton, but they're graduating some key parts. Yeah, yeah. Of, and suddenly, uh, Winnemac is going to be your big dog as far as uh, school size goes. Yeah. in the new conference. So. And I, and, and Judson. Jetson will be good. I mean, uh, the Benson kid is mm-hmm. just a junior. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They seem to, you know, I was really shocked at how well they did this year after yeah. the graduation of Cheyenne Allen and, and all the, you know, yeah. the quarterback and everything that they had. And coach Lambert does a great job there. Oof. He's a he's a very good coach. He has. He came in, I think, what, is this his fifth year? Because yeah. he came in as, when I think Allen so, was a yeah. freshman. Yeah. Yeah, he just completely turned that thing around in a hurry. Yeah. They were just good, quick. So, all right. Well, uh, and the Indiana Northern State, Con- you last thoughts. Indiana Northern State Conference will be a beast next mm, year. Yeah, I mean Knox is Knox isn't going anywhere. Right. Oh yeah, they're very young and they're just loaded with talent. Yeah, Obviously, I mean McLaughlin that, will be back. And, yeah, and Glenn is. You know, they're in a sectional championship game as well. You got yeah. Valley, obviously, Jimtown. Yeah, I geez. think Valley Valley will be really good. I know they'll yeah. miss a lot. The kids are graduating, but Valley bat they got running backs coming out of their ears. Mm-hmm. I mean, they'll they'll be good. You know, Jimtown I think will be better next year. Yeah. Yeah, I think Bremen is on the up up and come. And, yeah. Uh, you know, Laville I think yeah. is going to stay pretty solid I'm as curious, well. Yeah, that wide receiver Bremen has, and I don't think, is he graduating Graverson? He is a very good player. Mm-hmm. He's one of the better wide receivers I saw all year. Yeah. I mean, he, including the LCC receivers on the, mm-hmm. he's very good. Yeah. Well, that's going to put a uh, bow on our uh, fall sports season. Mm-hmm. So we'll uh, take a break and come back and uh, we'll talk some girls basketball here when we get back. Talking sports with Val. When it comes to legal needs, you want to make sure that you have the best team in your corner. Here at Peterson, Wagoner & Perkins, we strive to provide you with the highest quality legal and professional service. Whatever your needs are, from estate planning and trusts to appeals and guardianships, Peterson, Wagoner & Perkins has the knowledge and experience to serve you now and in the future.
Stop on by to In Your Hardware for all your home project needs. With a broad selection of garden supplies, tools, and paints featuring brands like Milwaukee, Diablo, and their newest paint line Valspar, you can be sure that Inyarts will supply you with the most top rated equipment. And if you need something for a quick job, check out Inyarts Rental Selection to get you going. Stop on in at 1619 Main Street, Rochester, or call 574 223 4920 to see how Inyarts friendly staff can help you. Pacesetters Real Estate knows that buying and selling properties can be a tough and complicated task. That's why we are here to provide you with our full service process where we walk with you every step of the way. Whether you're looking to buy a home or you're looking to sell, Pacesetters Real Estate is here for you. Call 574-223-5000 or visit us online at www.pacesettersre.net. At First Federal Savings Bank, you can bank on the go. With the First Federal Savings Bank mobile app, you can check account balances, transfer money, view account history, deposit your checks, and pay your bills. If you want your mobile banking done easy, download the First Federal Savings Bank mobile app today. The app is available for both Apple and Android phones and tablets. Just type in First Federal Savings Bank in the search bar and look for the white star with the green background. Welcome back here, talking sports with Val, and uh, got a little ahead of myself there. We're not quite done with the fall sports just yet. Got to talk about the regional champion Pioneer volleyball team as they were at Frankfurt on Saturday, taking on number one Muncie Burris. And boy, the Owls, uh, you know, they're the real deal. But Pioneer, you know, that first set they battled right there and actually took the lead, twenty-two twenty-one. Unfortunately, Burris would score the last four and, and win set one, 25-22. And it was 25-23. 23. It was okay. actually 23 all. Okay. And Pioneer missed a serve. Brooklyn Borges missed a serve, service error. And then at 24-23, so now Muncie Burris is serving, and they and Pioneer shanks the, shanks the pass. Yeah. And that was just, that was huge. And uh, Muncie Burris wound up winning 25-23, 25-17, 25-20. Yeah. And then, now again, yeah, but boy, that first set is the one. And I talked with Coach uh, not Rod Nyes afterwards. He said, "Boy, the, the, that that was huge, because you know you miss a serve, it's almost like two points. Mm -hmm. You know, you're you lose a point, and then you give your your opponent the ball essentially." Yeah. I talked with Coach Jim Craig at Muncie Burris afterwards. He said that was huge. He said that was the match right there. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, so both coaches thought that was huge, um, and you know. I was really curious to see, you know, I hadn't seen Muncie. I don't think I'd ever seen Muncie Burris play in person before. And, yeah, they're good, but I don't think they're – they didn't try and reinvent the game, you know. Mm -hmm. They just – but they don't make mistakes either. Right. And uh, the player that was very impressive was Aubrey Miller, um, who, again, if you saw Aubrey Miller walking down the street, I don't know if you'd say, wow, she must be a really great volleyball player. Mm -hmm. She's like 5'7", mm -hmm. maybe, but, boy, she had a – she had a gun of an arm. I mean, and all that, but I think she had some disguise to her, her swing, mm -hmm. where you didn't know where she was coming from. And I mean, she could hit it from the front. She could hit it from the. I mean, she could hit it from the outside, from the opposite, from the back row. Mm -hmm. She was a very good player. I think she she led them with eighteen kills. And and I think one of the things you know, even my wife noticed, and and yeah, I think you talked about it pre previous to this. Mm -hmm. uh, they had some some wicked spin on their serves, mm -hmm. you know, and. You don't think about it being a big deal, but when uh, when you're trying to serve receive against a, a serve that's coming at you with yeah. a, a different spin, you know it, it's hard to control it. It's hard to yeah. get a good pass off, and that uh, that was pretty evident there. You know, if my wife picked up on it, that was real evident. Yeah, Rod and I has talked about that. Passing mm -hmm. was just a huge factor in it. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I mean, because like Lily Howell's serve would it would get like just high enough to get over the net, and then almost as soon as it got over the net, it would just zoom down and mm -hmm. almost like almost like a gain spin mm -hmm. as it went down so yeah uh, passing was just a big problem for pioneer but muncie burris served really well yeah too yeah and they didn't there wasn't a weak server i mean either yeah uh, yeah not a lot the, of serve the, the, the two freshmen that they have were just brought in for their serves mm -hmm. that that muncie burris used and except for the, well the, the three freshmen the other freshman was that uh, john maria 
Jackson, who was a fantastic freshman. Yeah. Why was she good? But again, it, again, Muncie Burris wasn't redefining. They weren't reinventing the wheel. I mean, they it was a one setter system. Mm-hmm. Um, the Avery Seal, their setter, was just really good. They camped her out at the net, and she just she hit every target. I mean, mm-hmm. they they didn't miss many. Yeah, she had a lot of weapons to to yeah. set to. Right. The the Tremel girl was a very good player. Mm-hmm. Uh, we we knew about Lily Howell. Yeah. Uh, it was interesting co- talking to Coach Craig. He, he he said you know she's had some bad knees and. Uh, they got to take her out. Sometimes they got to take her out for a rotation, uh, but uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Again, they, they just they don't they don't beat themselves, and mm-hmm. they were, they're just very good. And they're they're a very accurate hitting team. I mean, they didn't miss many. As for Pioneer, I thought I thought Kylie Andrew played the best match of her career. She was fantastic. Mm-hmm. I thought her. I mean, I don't know. I think she had four blocks. I mean, she was everywhere. Um, and Brooklyn Borges was great. I mean, eight kills uh, against a really good team. I mean, I th- I think they you know again. Uh, I think Pioneer's system kind of, I don't know if it gave Muncie Burris fits, but I think I think it gave him some problems from time to time. I mean, you know, I talked with Coach uh, talk with Coach Craig from Muncie Burris. He goes, I thought their system was great. He goes, if, if I had their versatility, I would run the same system myself. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to, you know, we talk about Rochester graduating a great group of seniors. Well, Pioneer's got one that's uh, going to be graduating as well, so they're going to have a lot of shoes to fill, you know. Kirsten Nyes will be back, but uh, you know the basically the entire starting lineup besides hers graduating. So yeah, it's going to be interesting. I mean, you know, Coach Nyes always seems to find a way to just reload. You know, it doesn't seem like he right. has to rebuild. But if if anything, that's going to be a, a big test for how they can come back from graduating all these seniors. Yeah, I mean, uh, Adeline Kripe was you know just had a fantastic postseason. Uh, Elizabeth Rance, I mean, we just had her best year as a senior. Blair mm-hmm. Grigsby, mm-hmm. I mean, to see all these players be- become what they were, that, that, you know, just a great credit to the coaching staff and great credit to the kids you know, for yeah. developing these players. Uh, you yeah. know, you got a couple of them going on to play next year. You know, with Mac Rogers going to uh, yeah. Vanguard, and you got uh, Borges going over to Ohio Christian. So, you know, it's it's a great group of kids and right you know, I mean, what, yeah what a, what a career mac rogers had i mean she was you know, i think she only had three kills but she had i mean you know er, i mean just all of her skills i mean i i can't think of a more well i mean she and i'd put her up in that like hannah town range of you know most well-skilled most versatile players that you've seen i mean uh, to think you know you've got a six-foot setter mm-hmm. yeah it was a really good setter yeah she can set serve receive hit you name it. She's a great. She's a great back row player. Right. I mean, she's a great. I mean, she led them in yeah. digs in that match. I think she had twelve digs against uh, Muncie Burris. Yeah. So a great season for the Panthers. You know that uh, that regional that was just a, a great day, and you know defeating undefeated South Central, and then uh, thirty and five Busco in the championship. Uh, unfortunately, you know made it one one short of making it to the state uh, title game and. Speaking of state title game, uh, we got to give Tom Finnickel and, and the Southwood mm-hmm. uh, Valley Knights, as they call yeah. them, uh, congratulatory uh, you know shout out as they are going to be playing for a state title against Tecumseh. Tecumseh yeah, <laughs> same team that uh, Caston played in the softball state championship yeah, last for, spring. For a lot of those Tecumseh volleyball players, this will be their sixth state championship uh, game or match of their high school athletic careers. Yeah, I mean, uh, they're they're really good in basketball, by the way, too. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking about that. You mm-hmm. know, there's there's some really high numbers up there, almost as good as some of those Pioneer girls as far as number of times they played in state title games. Yeah, and, that Jenna Donahue is a f- she's a fantastic volleyball player as well. She's yeah, going to yeah. Evansville for softball, but yeah, I mean, this is yeah, and I mean they they beat a couple private schools on the way. I mean, this is uh, yeah, I'm really cr- curious to see how they how Southwood matches up with them. Yeah, yeah, it would be fun to see uh, what the results are from that right. one. They'd you know? be, yeah, they'd be Christian Academy uh, in the semi-state, I think, who's a very, very good program. So, yeah, uh, very. Third third time for uh, Coach Finnickel that, I believe, uh, that has not won one yet? Yeah, I, I think there were a couple other times that he, they made state back when it was a Final Four. Okay. And they lost in the state semifinals. Okay. But yeah, I think so. I think it's his fifth trip to state and his third state championship match. Yeah, third state championship match. Yeah. So, and yeah, I mean, uh, you know, Rod and I, I, I think I put on, 
I put on X, you know, what Rod and I said about it. I didn't have room for it in my article, but I wanted to put it put it out there somewhere because he wanted. I mean, we're talking with him about his match, and he was like, "How does Southwood do?" Mm. You know, he, so. Oh yeah, yeah. Those two are you know great respect for each other. Yeah, and uh, you know we saw that a couple years ago when Southwood beat Pioneer in that mm-hmm. championship game. That was an epic match, and mm-hmm. yeah, a lot of respect there from uh, Coach Nice to Coach Finical, and and good luck to the. Southwood Valley Knights. Yeah, as they uh, go for a state title. And tomorrow. Southwood is so young. I mean, they only got yeah. two seniors, and Shania <laughs> Ramey and Callie Pershing are just freshmen. I mean, this team uh, is. Yeah, this may be a start of a you know a dynasty for right. them. Right, and I mean Tom Finnicles has been. This is his thirty fifth year as the coach. Wow. Second stint. First stint was seven years. And now in the twenty eighth year of his second stint. Yeah. And um, the program is as good as it's ever been, seemingly. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Great guy, great guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, all right, now we'll wrap up the fall season and uh, get into some girls' basketball. And uh, let's start off with the Rochester Zebras Valley. You were there last night as they opened up their season at home, taking on the North Judson Blue Jays. You can see there, obviously, we've talked about it. The the bench for the uh, Zebras is going to be kind of uh, lonely this year. Mm-hmm. Only seven players. You but... couldn't help but notice there were more coaches on the bench than there were players. Yeah. But I mean, this team. I, you know, again, I, I talked with Coach uh, Joel Burris before this. Season. I said, "Is this team by having only seven? Is it only going to draw them closer together?" And I think it did. Mm-hmm. I think based on this one game, I think it kind of did. Uh, I think that they, if they play like this, and again, it's a long journey. It's you know, but I think this was a start. Uh, that you know, they fell behind six to nothing right away. But uh, you know, an impressive. Yeah, that was, that... That player right there, uh, yeah. you can tell right out of the gate, Aubrey Wilson, she's going to have a good career for the Zebras. She's, yeah. She is a great player. and Really good shooter. Mm-hmm. Uh, she really gets her feet set well and quickly, and she's got a nice quick release on that shot. And uh, by the end of the quarter, it was tied 10-all as uh, Judson would miss at the buzzer. And that's the thing you talk about having a quick shot as a freshman, mm-hmm. to have a quick shot but not rush your shot is a challenge and she yeah. seems like she's got that figured out right because i mean there was so much concern i think from a shooting standpoint boy you lose callie watson and and uh riley holloway and is this team gonna be a good shooting team well um they were fine and the, you know the highlight of this run might have been this run through the uh second quarter they went on a 9-0 run they went from being down 13-10 to being ahead 19-13 and this is an absolutely sweet move in the post by Jaden field for her first career bucket yeah uh, it was 1913. Um, this was a big bucket, I thought. By I think it was Kaya Burkett, who was a three toward the end of the half. They made it 1917 before halftime. I think the the neat thing too is uh, everybody for the Zebras scored, right? Yep, everybody had at least one. Yep, all seven played. All seven had at least one field goal. In fact, uh, Judson scores the first five points of the second half to go up 22-19. Nice little up and under move by Audrey Bollinger. She scores and she gets fouled. She looked pretty good. You know, she hasn't played in a while, so it's good to see her back on the floor. And yeah. She I, looked I, pretty good. Yeah, she got a couple spare minutes uh, when Brian Jennings was the coach two years ago as a freshman, but missed all of last season due to knee surgery. Um, you know, uh, Reagan Hensley was the story for Judson. She scored 16 of her 17 points in the second half. That three made it 35-28, but then Rochester hits one three. And then they hit another three. That was, I think, Clevenger hits. And all of a sudden, a seven-point deficit is down to one at 35-34. This is a nice move, nice nice ball handling, and a nice drive to the bucket by Braylon Hunter. She scored all five of her points in the fourth quarter. Yeah, it's after she hit a three there. Uh, then they would tie the game. Then a three-pointer by Hensley again. I mean, she was clutch for them. That made it 41-38. Uh, then nice little inside out play. They get a wide open 17 foot look for Clevenger. That makes it 41 40. And Ella McCarter gives Rochester the lead with about two minutes and 10 seconds to go in the game 42 41. This was turned out to be the winning bucket. An inbounds play, and Kylie Lehigh gets the roll from about 12 feet out. But Judson up 43 um, 42. There were about, th- yeah, and then um, this is how Wilson picks up her fifth foul on a steal. Um, and Wilson has to foul to prevent the layup from going down. So that's her fifth. Judson would miss both free throws, and Rochester would get a chance. Uh, Clevenger throws up an air ball, and then uh, second shot there by Hunter, 
is it looked like it was partially blocked by Hensley, and then that third shot was way after the buzzer. So North Judson wins 43-42, to 42, but 13 for Aubrey Wilson, 9 for Riley Clevenger, 6 for Ella McCarter, 5 for Braylon Hunter, uh, 4 for Mia Hadeshell, who I thought really gave a nice contribution. You know, Mia can do a little bit of everything out there. She can mm -hmm. shoot it a little bit, she can handle it a little bit, and she's not afraid to dive on the floor for a loose ball. Yeah, good to see Mia back. She uh, missed quite a bit of the end of the volleyball season yeah. due to an illness, so it's good to yeah. see her back on the floor. Yeah, kind of, kind of like her older sister. I mean, she, mm -hmm. did, you know, her older sister did a little bit of everything, and yeah. I think Mia's kind of the same way. So, uh, you know, the unfortunately they lose to uh, Judson by one, and tomorrow they get to go down to Fulton, <laughs> take on the Cast and Comets, who uh, won a big one there to open up against Argus. So. Uh, it should be an interesting one down there uh, tomorrow night. Right, Joel Burris knows those cast and kids. Going back to when he was the coach there and they were elementary school, there were third graders attending his camp, mm -hmm. his summer camp. So he knows those kids very well. He said, he goes, man, it seems like those kids have been around forever. He goes, I'm going to go to their graduation ceremony just to make sure, just to make sure they graduate, see the, ta <laughs> the tassel on their cap move, so just to make sure they're gone. He goes, they've been so good for so long, and he. Well, yeah. they've they've added a piece to this team this year that uh, he doesn't know about because uh -huh. she wasn't there in third grade. Mm. Uh, but uh, yeah, we'll talk about her in just a minute. But uh, yeah, Maddie Douglas was impressive last mm -hmm. night. So uh, yeah, Saturday at Caston, and then they come back home on Wednesday to take on Northwestern. And you know, obviously Northwestern is is out of Leyden's finally, yeah. but uh, you know they've got some pretty talented kids coming back there as well. So it's going right. to be a tough couple games. Here for the uh, zebras getting started. Right, I mean, like, Northwestern are going to have the height advantage in that game, and they've also got they've also got some pretty experienced guards. But it's a mm -hmm. new coach. I'll be curious to see how the system has changed because I think yeah. it's it's not just a new head coach; it's a whole new coaching staff. Yeah, Wendy Gatlin. Yeah, yeah, I I I know her. She's a good coach, so mm -hmm. she's going to have them. Yeah, mm -hmm. so she's a really good coach and. Uh, is it Bashir? Is she still still there yeah. for I think, she's, I think she's just a junior this yeah. year. Yeah, yeah. She had a really good year last year, and mm. uh, the she's got some link. Yeah, I'm trying to remember if the Hale girl graduated or not, but she's she would be a post for them. Mm -hmm. So yeah, they'll be. I mean, I don't. Yeah, they'll they'll have some talent out there. But again, Rochester, um, they definitely weren't afraid. Again, I, I don't know if you'd call that game fast paced, but I, 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 they weren't holding on to the ball either. So. Mm -hmm. Again, yeah, uh, you could look at the beginning part of their schedule and say it's it's going to be it's going to be a challenge because they got a lot of really good teams sitting there right yeah. at the, the first five or six games of the year. Mm -hmm. So, all right, um, I was up at Argus last night. Uh, thanks to Kate and Caleb for handling the production down there at Rochester. Allowed me to go up to uh, Phil Waybright Gymnasium. The Argus Dragons hosting the Cast and Comets and. You talk about graduation losses, obviously, you talk about that all the time, but, you know, both these teams have a lot of big shoes to fill, Argus especially, you know, Emma Dunlap and Bailey Binkley and, and Isabel Stoltz, and, you know, for uh, Kasten, obviously, with uh, Harness and uh, Mollenkoff, you know, some pretty big shoes to fill there. Uh, Addison Zippelman, you know, right out of the gate gets the bucket, but this... Uh, this one right here, number 10, Samantha Redinger, the old left-hander. Uh, she was a buzzsaw in the, in the game mm -hmm. last night. She ended the game with 34, and she had 22, I believe, at the half. And uh, Morgan Barkus there, she's a junior for the, uh, the Zebra, or the uh, <laughs> Zebras, the Dragons. Uh, you know, she's got a, a, some big shoes to fill there with uh, Binkley graduating. But Argus was up 11-8 after one. And right here, uh, this one's the one you're going to have to keep an eye on for casting. Number 22, Maddie Douglas gets the drive to the bucket. She gets in the passing lane, gets the steal. Left-hand layup is good. She came in off the bench and yeah. had six quick points for the Comets. She just had some basketball instincts that just freshmen don't typically have. You think being the coach's kid might have something to do with that. Yeah. You think she's seen some basketball before. Right. Yeah. But, uh, you know, again here into the passing lane and, and the layup. And, you know, she would lead the Comets uh, coming off the bench. She would lead them in scoring. She would have 23 for the uh, evening. And, um, you know, 
they needed it as uh, Argus would actually end the first half up by four, 30 to 26. Isabel Scales uh, did not score in the first half. Uh, you know that's not going <laughs> to stay. She gets fouled on the putback mm-hmm. and puts them both in. She ends up with 12, all of them in the third quarter, and that would see the uh, cast and comments outscore the Dragons there in that third quarter by nine as they were down four going into the quarter. Samantha Redinger just mm-hmm. doing everything she can to keep the Dragons in it. You know, she was she was hitting from all three levels. There's scales. That's off of an assist from Douglas with the three. But, you know, Sam was hitting the outside shot. She was driving to the paint, and, and her mid-range game was, was good as well. There's a steal by yeah, scales. Well, you know, talk, I talked with uh, uh, Coach uh, Scott Jennings. He raved about um, Samantha Redinger's work ethic during the off season. Mm. I mean, she, you know, I, I think she really wants to play college basketball. And, uh, I mean, again, to put that in perspective, yeah, well, let's let's see some more cast and highlights here. Yeah. Addison Simpleman was great, too. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, we'll talk about some of the, uh, you know, a lot of free throws, actually. I had Argus 14 of 21. I had Kasten 15 of 23. Kasten would pull away for the 20-point uh, win late, right. but. 17 to 2 in the fourth quarter. Yeah, it. You know, and Coach Jennings mm-hmm. even said it after the game. We ran out of steam. Mm-hmm. You know, they were uh, that that third quarter. You could see it kind of the momentum would shift, and you know, the, Argus was also playing without uh, L.A. Bolenbacher, who was at the FFA, you know, mm-hmm. national convention in Indianapolis. So, you know, if they have her and her contributions on the inside, what she can do as far as rebounding, and and you know, if she can get you know ten points or so, and and obviously that's another body, so they don't have it to play as much. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it makes a big difference. Yeah. Um, Redinger but, ended with 34. Douglas yeah. had 23. Zippelman had 19. She was 9 of 14 from the free throw line. She took 14 free throws. Mm-hmm. And uh, Scales was uh, had 12. She was 5 for 5 mm-hmm. from the free throw line. Right. To put that 34-point performance by Redinger in perspective, Kasten last year allowed 33.5 per game Yeah. as and, a team. Yeah, and Sam outdid that by half a point. Yeah. By, by herself. herself, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, that's that's not yeah thir- that's not thirty four against some team you're just going to steamroll. Right, right. That's thirty four against one of the best teams on Argus's schedule. Yeah, number three team in the state. Yeah, and they're legit. Yeah, and they they have pieces of uh, you know talent everywhere. Mm-hmm. So yeah, no, it's a it was a great performance. Right, where, where she's going to be number one on every team scouting report. Oh yeah, and she, yeah. I'm sure she was number one on cast and scouting report. Yep, yep. It's just going to get. Uh, highlighted even more for the next time but mm-hmm. you know for uh for argus they have a uh, another big one coming up on tuesday they head over to triton you know they're going to take on a and you know they'll have ellie bullenbacher back which is good yeah. because they're going to need her against uh, addison beers and mm-hmm. you know triton looks to be one of the top teams in the right. conference this year yeah jocelyn faulkner i think she's got a chance to be an all-conference player for mm-hmm. triton as well so yeah we'll see how argus matches up against them and and, and will they well, they run out of steam in the fourth quarter again. Mm-hmm. Obviously, the the Bollenbacher factor will help out. Yeah, it'll help out for them. And, of course, we talked about Kasten. They'll open up their home part of the season tomorrow at home against Rochester. So, uh, you know, that'll be an interesting matchup. Right, because Rochester, you know, they've got um, some experienced players on the, you know, they've got an experienced player on the wing in Ellen McCarter, and, but also some experienced guards. But they've also got these freshmen. So, again, if you're if you're Kasten and you're putting together a game plan, how do you do it? You know, last year Kasten got to face Rochester twice. The first time, the zone, the Rochester zone gave Kasten all kinds of problems. So, uh, but the, the second time they did a much better job against it. So, uh, again, I think Kasten's going to want to put some defensive pressure on Rochester early. Rochester struggled with 19 turnovers against North Jets. We'll see how effective that Kasten pressure is because, you know, Rochester will be uh, working on their press breaker yeah. in the 48 hours between games. Well, and the Dragons committed, and this is completely my stats, but I had them for 24 turnovers, uh, mm-hmm. you know, which is way too many. And mm-hmm. a lot of those that you saw with uh, Matty Douglas getting in the passing lanes and, you know, just creating havoc. Yeah. And so they're going to they're gonna look to probably do that to the Zebras as well. Mm-hmm. So it'll be a good one there. And, uh, you know, Kasten will be uh, at home again on Tuesday as well, taking on Peru. So uh, Coach Hayes coming up to uh, – 
casting on uh, Tuesday. Casting beat Peru twice last year, but both games were close. Yeah. I beat him by eight and then beat him by, I think, four in the Miami County Invite Championship game. Yep. All right. Uh, anything else real quick there with uh, Caston or Argus or Rochester? Uh, that's all. No. Not right now. Yeah, I'm just looking forward to seeing them, seeing Caston in person, seeing Maddie Douglas in person tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. I was, uh, I was 23. Impressed. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the thing that I was most impressed with it it was very efficient mm-hmm. i i don't i didn't keep the you know hits versus misses on her but uh mm-hmm. she didn't miss a lot yeah she was very efficient with it obviously layups are pretty efficient most yeah. of the time but uh you know her jumpers were were all going down so you know it, it's it's gonna be fun to watch her play mm-hmm. all right let's take a break here when we come back we're going to talk a little valley basketball we're going to talk a little culver basketball a little winnemac warriors as well when we get back here talking sports with Val. Kriskin's Pools and Spas is your local contractor for all your pool and hot tub installation needs. With a wide selection to choose from, Kriskin's is sure to hook you up with exactly what you need no matter what your budget is. To learn more about our services, visit kriskinspoolsandspas.com, call 574-857-3100, or stop on by at 7448 Liberty Avenue in Fulton to see how Kriskin's can help you. Here we go, Billy. Swing hard. As your local agent, I know you. I know every Saturday, your son Billy plays Little League. We sponsor his team. And we know you love parking way too close to the field. That's why we tailor a unique policy for you and your car. Because sometimes, something from out of left field can literally come from out of left field. That's simple human sense. Ask the Jennings Insurance Agency in Argus and Rochester if auto owners make sense for you. Looking for an easy way to provide custom branded products for your business, school, sports team, or fundraising event? Let the Winning Edge set up a customized web store that features branded products tailored to your business, school, church, or charitable cause. With a wide variety of customizable apparel, sports accessories, office accessories, and custom tumblers, the Winning Edge is sure to provide you with the best style that suits you. Find your edge by calling 574-223-6090 or going to our website, thewinningedgeathletics.com, and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Hello, sir. How can I help you today? I'm looking for a special gift. We have no tolerance for tomfoolery today. What do you mean, tomfoolery? What I said was, we have a nice selection of jewelry today. May I suggest that you give my friends at Affordable Hearing a call? Affordable Hearing offers hearing testing and unique solutions for everybody. We guarantee the lowest prices in the area and now have offices in Rochester and Logansport to serve you better. Call to book an appointment today. Welcome back here to Talking Sports with Val on a Friday afternoon. And talked about the Rochester Zebras, the Cast and Comets, the Argus Dragons. Tipkinu Valley also opened up their season last night against Bremen and uh, got a big win there at home, 54-39, the final. I did not see the film on that. I don't know what happened with the huddle, but uh, didn't get a chance to see that one. So I don't really know much about it. Do you? Uh, no, I know that I know that they got off to a great start. They were up twenty to six at the end of one, one quarter, and I think they kind of rode that lead throughout the game. Mm-hmm. Um, this was a Bremen team that was, remember this was Bremen's second game and Valley's first. So Bremen had a sixty nine thirty four win over Mishawaka Marion on Tuesday, and so that was a very impressive. So they held a team that scored sixty nine points in their first game to thirty nine um, last night. Mm-hmm. I talked with Chris Kindig before the season started. He said this is he said I'm not worried about us defensively we're going to be good defensively and I think they were mm-hmm. last night because that's a team with uh it's a Bremen team that I think is more maybe more guard oriented this year than maybe they were last year uh and I know that Ava Egolf um played very well last night f- uh, from everything that I had heard and Ava's the type who's you know she's a 5'9 guard but she's not afraid to she can guard your guards and she's taller than your guards but she can move her feet well but she's also a good rebounding guard Mm-hmm. So she's kind of a different type of player for Valley. Maybe they haven't had a player like that since maybe like Brenda Krieger, but maybe. But I mean, but I think Ava's more of a scorer than than Brenda Krieger. So, yeah, very good start because you didn't know about the you know this new group of Valley players. How well will they gel? And against a Bremen team playing their second game, well, it sounded like they gelled just fine. Mm-hmm. And now they get a you know a South Bend St. Joe team coming up on Saturday that's pretty athletic. So we'll see how they do uh, against them. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, it, we're going to be there for that one. So um, get a chance to see the uh, the Vikings and and see how they do. I think is this a St. Joe's first game? I think. Um, I, yeah, I don't think yeah. they've played yet, yeah. so it's hard to kind of gauge where they're at. But um, and then they go to uh, to CGA on Tuesday, so. You know. Again, another sectional opponent. And, you know, last year Valley played CGA in the regular season. They didn't play them in the sectional, but they did play them in the regular season. The CGA led for most of that game, and mm-hmm. Valley kind of wore them down in the fourth quarter. So mm-hmm. uh, this is a CGA team that's talented. Uh, yeah. And uh, you play, have to play them at their place, which is a tough place to play. Uh, uh, so, uh, yeah, that should be a good one. And then they play Northwestern next what, next Saturday, I think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, CJ would be interesting. You know, it's it's always hard to gauge where they're at, but I did see one of their freshmen uh, that's you know a freshman this year that made it to the IGBRR top fifty list mm-hmm. for the state of Indiana. So, uh, you know, you, you would think that uh, the potential was there for mm-hmm. some talent, right? Combined with the players they have coming back, like mm-hmm. uh, 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 Miller and Brum, yeah, 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 yeah. Brum's just a sophomore, right? Right. Yeah, I think so, Miller's just a sophomore as well. Right? Yeah, yeah. Um, also, uh, some Valley alumni news. Uh, Sidney Wagner. Yeah, named what preseason Division Three uh, All American. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's that's pretty good. After you know her freshman year campaign, she was the uh, M M I A A uh, Player of the Year. Yeah. You know, and so she gets rewarded as well with a. Uh, preseason all america yeah yeah so we won't mention how trying did against ball state in that uh, exhibition game on wednesday I, or should we I, I, well we can uh-huh. i mean a couple of our alumni that are yeah. playing in there obviously ashland brook playing for ball state and yeah. sid playing for for trying uh, yeah. how did they do and ball state won the game 100 to 41 okay which you would expect a D one team to be a D three team yeah what is the what is the deal this year maybe i haven't noticed it before, but it seems like all these D1 schools are playing these D3 NAI schools for exhibition games. What's yeah, they changed the the NCAA changed the rule about a few years ago because it used to be where you know you'd play like athletes in action or right. or the or or like a foreign team, right. you know the the Russian national team or the Bulgarian or whatever. Yeah. But now the kind of these touring teams, but now now they allow you know a, a D three team to play a D one. Okay. Or 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 a D two team to play a D one team. Yeah. So I think I think it serves everybody well. Yeah. Grace's men's team was over at Mackey this week. Right, they, uh, they played. Right, the IU men played U Indy. Yeah, yeah. So I, th- yeah. I think I think it's everybody kind of likes that. Yeah, because you know, I think it's for the for the D, for the lower division to play at a D one arena. Right. I think I think it's a great opportunity for them, and I think uh, you know for uh, and I think, and it's a lot of familiar faces too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, these players are familiar with each other. I was just curious because I was like, why why are all these D one schools playing all these D three and mm-hmm. NAIA schools? So that's yeah, okay. that was a good rule. It was a rule change the NCAA made about three four years ago. I think it was a very good thing. Yeah, yeah. Purdue women, who did they play? They had a um, Quincy. Yeah, yeah, Quincy. I, I knew they played. Uh, they they looked to be pretty good this year. I think they're not going to be IU good, but. I think the IE women are probably stack, stacking up pretty well. Yeah, uh, yeah. I use the rank number nine in the country, but like rank number th- rank third in the Big Ten behind Iowa and Ohio State. Yeah. All right. So we'll see the uh, Vikings tomorrow as they host South Bend St. Joe. We'll be over there for that one with our Valley crew and get that one for you on IHSA TV. Um, up at John R. Nelson Gymnasium, the Culver Cavaliers last night opening up their season against South Central. A lot of these South Central girls look vaguely familiar, Val. It seems like we just saw them at uh, Rochester High School just about a week and a half ago. Yeah, a lot of Marxes. And... Yeah. And the Cavaliers, obviously, uh, and... you know, a little bit of turnover with Culver as far as uh, now – uh, AJ and Adam Neese are coaching the team. Mm-hmm. No Grace Sieber last night. She was at the FFA convention, uh, as you know, down there with Ellie. As far as uh, that goes, and you know, South Central, you know, they seem to be good in everything in girls sports. Is yeah. there anything they can't do in girls sports? I mean, volleyball, basketball, softball. They're they're good at them all. And right, I mean, they're very long and athletic. Which I think help, which will help you in 
most any sport. But yeah, Coach Anderson does a very good job at South Central. And it was just a struggle for Culver to score again. It's a pretty new Culver team. Um, you know, they graduated uh, Kennedy Jackson and Rose Peterson and Macy McEwen and uh, a whole bunch of girls from last year. So just kind of a new a new outfit with new coaches who just got on board about a week ago. So if any team is allowed to have a slow start, I think it would be this Culver team. Yeah, just looking at the starting lineup, they had uh, freshman Brooke Davis in there as one of their starters, Amaya Williams, who's a junior, along with um, – Cassidy Banks, who is back, so yeah. it's good to see. Right, her, um, uh, yeah, I, I had heard good stories about her at the uh, scrimmage that they had, so yeah. I, I, a healthy Cassidy, I, we're going to say the same thing about Cassidy in basketball that we did during soccer, a healthy, a healthy Cassidy Banks will make a big difference because yeah. of her size and athleticism. Yeah, and so and she's listed at 5'8". Yeah, so they'll get, uh, they'll get Grace Sieber back. I don't know if she'll be back for tomorrow's game. I don't know what the schedule is for that uh, conference, if it's over or not. But they will have a, a road trip to Trinity up there in South Bend. Uh, you know, Trinity has a very good soccer program, but not quite as strong, it seems like, in basketball. So maybe yeah. an opportunity for the Cavs to pick up a win. Yeah. I want to give a shout-out. Giselle Villegas has come out for basketball as a senior, so that's mm -hmm. nice to see. And Eliana uh, Andrzejewski uh, got in the game last night, I think, had a bucket toward the end. Yeah. So that's another – with her and Davis, you've got two freshmen who are uh, look like they're going to be able to contribute right away as, as on the varsity as freshmen. Yeah. Uh, the Winnemac Warriors, Coach Stasiak, they were our first team in action. They got going on Tuesday. They were over at Frontier. You went over there. Mm-hmm. Uh, they they won big fifty three twenty two. Tell us about that one. Yeah, uh, Winnemac won four games last year. Uh, they're going to win more than four this year. In fact, I they're going to win at least. Uh, in fact, well, I, they're ahead of schedule from yeah. where they were last year at this time. Right, they didn't get their first win last year until November twenty ninth. This mm -hmm. year they got their first win in October. They got yeah. it on a Halloween night. Yeah, you know they and they got up to a little bit of a slow start. They were behind seven to one. Coach Daisy had called timeout and just he told the kids he wanted to kind of pick up the tempo. He said. You know, Frontier is just, they're, they're happy to play a half-court game. We need to pick it up here. Mm -hmm. And uh, their defense, the, their defensive intensity really picked it up. What might really played two two different types of zones. They played a 1-3-1, and then they played a kind of a 2, kind of like a 2-3 trap. Mm -hmm. It was it looked like a 2-3, but once you got the ball on the sidelines, they went after it, uh, and they, they got after you. And it was hard for Frontier to get the ball out of the sidelines. And once they got out... If they got the ball out of the sidelines, it became turnover city, and the ball they got the fast break going. And uh, you know, Winnemac, they're they're a guard oriented team. Um, you know, uh, Candace Croft and Maggie Smith are their top two scorers from last year's team, and now they've got a third guard and freshman Sadie Popejoy. That get and you know she's a very confident shooter, and you know uh, Croft, Smith, and Popejoy combined to make six threes on the on the night. Um, Smith hit three threes. Popejoy hit two, and then Croft hit hit a three. But Croft can also score off the dribble. And Popejoy's got a little bit of that to her game as well, mm -hmm. where they can not only, uh, you know, shoot the, you know, off, you know, off the catch, but they can also shoot off the dribble. So, um, and and they're very athletic, too. I mean, you know, we Croft and even Maggie Smith. Was, Maggie Smith was playing basketball three days after competing in the state finals in cross country. Mm -hmm. So she's... She's a five-sport athlete, no doubt. She's a tremendous athlete, and then Croft is athletic, and Popejoy is a pretty. You know, she's got. You know, Coach Daisy had talked about. You know, she's going to contribute right away when I interviewed her before the season. But seeing Popejoy, she's really got. Again, the heights aren't listed on the roster, so I'm just guessing here. Popejoy looked about five six, five seven, and she got had some length to her. Mm -hmm. So she's really going to be a good defensive player as well, and she's. Uh, so you get those three, and they all scored in double figures. Uh, Pope Joy had 12, Croft had 12, and Smith had 11 in that Frontier game. And then um, some of the other, you know, Piper Link had 8. You know, Piper is kind of an undersized post, but she can play on the wing as well. She's a good enough athlete. Uh, and then, uh, you know, Marissa Iverson, she's really come along. And she's a, she, she's only a sober, but she's a good athlete. And she's, you know, they don't list heights. She looked about 5'8", five, 5'9", five, really, you know, good height, can move well. Um yeah, I, I liked a lot of what I saw from Winnemag. This team is going to win a lot more than four games. Uh, yeah. And uh, just had a better idea of how they wanted to play. Mm -hmm. Just got off to a slow start where probably just had some first-game jitters. But once they got over them, you know, they played really well. They went from 7-1. to one, They were down 7-1 to the point where they were up 38-10. to 10, So that's a 37-3 that's a to 3 run. Mm -hmm. They held Frontier to three points for basically a, two full quarters. 
Yeah, and you know uh, Coach Chazak obviously knows what he's doing. And it's just a matter of time before everybody gets on the same page with him. Yeah. And, again, they're still young. Mm -hmm. I mean, Piper Link's a senior, but they're still – and Maggie Smith's a senior, but they're still young in a lot of areas. And they're just – you know, but they're – yeah. You know, Croft got thrown right into the fire last year as a freshman. So, Mm -hmm. you know, she was basically kind of relied upon to to do a lot of the scoring and ball handling and everything as a freshman. So, you know, as she gets uh, some age on her and and some experience, it's just going to get that much better for – Stasiak. Yeah, and just the, much more of a defensive identity this mm-hmm. year. I mean, th- those two zones, they just looked comfortable in those zones. I and mean, it wasn't just a sit back in a zone type of zone. It was yeah. it was a zone that was designed to get after you and cause you problems. So, again, now, again, Frontier was a new addition to their schedule. Last year they had opened up at Valpo. It just, right, and, uh, and Clinton Central beat them last night 48-4. to four, So it's... Beat Frontier, they have 48 yeah, to Yeah, yeah it's, it's not... Uh, the toughest team that Winnemac is going to face by mm-hmm. any means, but a uh, great start uh, for them. And, you know, they got a whole week to prepare for Westville coming in on uh, Tuesday. Right, and they, they lost a tough one to Westville last year. I think they lost by two to Westville. Now they get them at home this year. So here's another chance at a win. And then, you know, next Friday night, I, I, that is going to be a very interesting game when they travel to Argus. Mm-hmm. You know, Argus, tra- and, Argus and Winnemac is, is always, you know, doesn't matter the score or the the record mm-hmm. it's always interesting I yeah mean, you know you look back throughout the years you know Argus has had some really good teams struggle against Winnemac and Winnemac has had some really good teams struggle against Argus and yeah so that's always an interesting right. game and it's yeah. going to be a you know a conference game coming up next year too right right so that's that's really interesting that's what I was talking about with coach Jennings last night he's like you know this is a conference game for you next year. He's mm-hmm. like, I know. And mm-hmm. Triton's a conference game for you next year. I know. Yeah. You know, so that's that dynamic is going to be fun. Mm-hmm. You know, we talked about it with the football. It's going to be fun with basketball as well because uh, yeah. you throw in Argus and OD because mm-hmm. uh, they're obviously not going to be in the football mix, but you throw them in with the basketball. That's going to be interesting. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, good start for Coach Stasiak and the girls. They uh, start off 1-0 and with a uh, home game against Westville coming up on yeah. Tuesday. Yeah, and, you know, Frontier tried playing a man against them. And, boy, if, if you're going to play a man against Winnemac, you better have quick guards because Winnemac's got quick guards too. I mean, mm-hmm. they got – I mean, you better be athletic in that perimeter. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, this is uh, – I, I liked a lot of what I saw from Winnemac the other night. Yeah. Should uh, should be interesting mm-hmm. when we get into conference play for them. Mm-hmm. See what uh, yeah. how that shakes out. Yeah, you know, obviously we talk about the the HNAC with Caston's going to be the team to beat. Obviously they're coming off of a undefeated season last year in the conference, but uh, you know it, it'll be interesting. Mm-hmm. It'll be interesting to see what the Warriors can do. And so uh, six of our seven teams have uh, got games under their belt. Uh, Pioneer is still going to be waiting. For another week or so, they don't start until the 14th against uh, Clinton Central. It's going to be Clinton Central's fifth game <laughs> when Pioneer uh, tips off their play, and it's been a little bit of a tumultuous week to say the least. Yeah, at, uh, Pioneer. Royal yeah. Center. Pioneer's had a coaching change. Uh, Jennifer Burns has stepped down before coaching her first game. She has a health issue, and we hope she's doing okay. Yeah. Uh, but uh, Adam Berry has been running practice. We don't know. Uh, don't know a whole lot, really. We don't know a whole yeah. lot about Pioneer Girls basketball right now. We know yeah. that they've got McKenna Stricker back. Um, we know they've got Gracie Hopper back, but we don't know too much more couple, about Yeah, a couple yeah. of the seniors decided not to come out. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, there was uh, going to be some returning starters mm-hmm. coming back, and, and it looks like just those two as far as returners go. Mm-hmm. And, uh, Casey Webb uh, and uh, Gracie Hopper, the uh, two seniors, it looks like. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, we'll get some more information when we get it because it's right now it's kind of all up in flux. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, just one of those things. So we'll try and figure that out. But uh, fortunately, they do have a little bit of time to to try and you know kind of regroup and and figure things out. And you know, looking for some big things from some younger players. You know, Mia McKeg had some varsity time last year. She's a, a really good shooter. Obviously, uh, Julia McGrew. You know, we saw what she could do in that Wabash game, mm-hmm. you know, putting in that winning bucket in the sectional semifinal. So, you know, there's there's some pieces there. We'll see how they can uh, come together and see who ends up being the coach. I know uh, Coach Barry said he would uh, take it if, if need be, but uh, 
I think they're also looking as well. So mm-hmm. kind of a unique situation here to start the season yeah. for the Panthers. Yeah, but just still hoping everything's well with Jennifer Burns. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So don't really know a whole lot about mm-hmm. the situation and uh, it's a private matter for her, mm-hmm. so uh, we, we hope that she's uh, can uh, can get through it. So, well, what else, Val? Oh, floor is yours. Uh, I think, yeah. Um, you know, wrestling practice started this past week. Um, mm-hmm. There are new weight classes this year. The first, the like the the six lowest are basically the same as last year: one hundred six, one thirteen, one twenty, one twenty six, one thirty two. 138. Then it goes to, instead of 145, it goes to 144, and then 150, 157, 165, 175, one I think 190, and then 215, and then heavyweight. Okay. So is it the same same number of classes? Yeah, they still, just changed the still weights 14, a little bit. Still 14 weight classes, but they changed the weights around a little bit. Uh, I talked to uh, yeah, just talked to some kids. I think. Again, Rochester is going to be really good. They got four returning, two returning state placers, two more returning state qualifiers, and two really good freshmen. On top of that, are going to be j- jump right into the varsity mix. Uh, and you know, some kids who skip skip football because they wanted to work on their wrestling. So, this is going to be a, a very, very good team again. Uh, obviously, you know, the, you know, you lose car- kids like Carlos Orduno and uh, to graduation, and a lot of good, you know, Grayson Guard and. Uh, so you know they lost a ton of good se- you know Mitchell Schaefer. I mean they lost a lot of good seniors, but this is a you know Ethan Holloway and so many. Yeah, if I told you all the good kids they lost, it's gonna, you know I mean that, that would take a while. But, but I think they have it's still gonna be a good team. Yeah, uh, uh, girls wrestling program seems to be you know as as strong as ever for the zebras as well. Yeah, and, I'm curious to see what the numbers are like. Last year they had nine. I think I wouldn't be surprised if that number even went up this year. I think. I think there's there's just good word of mouth, and uh, you know they're they're if you might be new to the sport, but they're going to be willing to work with you. Yeah, like Tristan the, and Sarah Wilson and, and yeah the, their staff. Uh, girls swim practice is underway. Boys swim practice uh, starts soon. I would assume. Boys swim practice starts on Monday, along with boys basketball boys practice. Basketball starts on Monday as yeah, well. Yeah. Yeah, this this upcoming boys basketball season, there's a there's just a lot of change in the area. It's mm-hmm. it, it's not every it's who, who does everybody have? I mean, mm-hmm. it's just it's just going to be a different year. I I mean, people you know in the TRC, we think Wabash, Peru, and Manchester were the, basically the three best teams last year, and they look like the three best teams coming coming again just because they didn't none of them lost a lot. I mean, Man, mm-hmm. as good as yeah. as good as Manchester was last year, they were young. Yeah. Yeah. And then you know Peru with Ross with Ross and Redker, they're going to be very very good again, but the yeah. new coach and Travis Smith and then you know Wabash, you know I think Travis Daughtry is getting some college uh, offers. I think Anderson has offered Travis or Trevor Daughtry. Yeah. Trevor Daughtry. His older brother was Travis. This is Trevor Daughtry and then uh you know the Ford kid is back. I mean the, mm-hmm. the, they were pretty young last year and then uh yeah. coach's son uh yeah. You know, lost a heartbreaker in the sectional final to Lewis Cass, but they'll be back. And then you, know, you, th- you throw Lewis Cass into the TRC, what do they have? I mean, they get a new mm-hmm. coach, and you know they graduated uh, Chambers and, and good. So yeah. what are they? What are they going to be like? And yeah, very good run for them to, mm-hmm. to end last season. But yeah, they graduated a bunch. Yeah. You know what's what's Rochester going to look like? They were pretty young last year. They got a really good JV team last year. So right, they, Bach, right like? with Bacher and. Uh, 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 you know, Jack Reffitt looked Owen really Prater, good. Jack Reffitt, yeah. Grant, you know, Grant Clark had a health issue during football season. He wasn't able to play football much, but he'll he'll be involved in, in uh, on that basketball team. Maybe a kid like Harrison Pollock will be involved. Mm-hmm. But the kid, you know, Xavier Vance was a kid that I think they were hoping would be a big part of that basketball team, but he yeah. hurt his knee during football. So uh, what, what will he be like in the uh, size-wise? Right, right. Yeah, it doesn't look like Xavier's probably going to be able to play. So. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be interesting. So right. they start and, on you know, Monday. Valley, they, you know, they graduate Cumberland and Kaiser, but what will they? What will they look like? Uh, mm-hmm. You know, what, what we're going to be asking around. I think Caston had a very. Caston is an interesting team because mm-hmm. I mean they they didn't have a you know they they graduate Shane Lob, so they, they graduate their side. But they got a lot of shooting coming back. Mm-hmm. I know they've been working very hard because whenever I go to open gym, those guys are shoot, getting up shots. So, mm-hmm. and then uh, you know Culver, they suffered a you know they graduated a lot when you you know you lose Pizer and. Uh, uh, you know all those guys that they lost to, to graduation. So yeah. that was like Ethan Keller. They graduated him. So uh, curious to see what kind of team that, that they look like. Uh, uh, as co- you know, with with Coach Evans, and of course, who will be on his coaching staff? Because 
uh, the niece brothers were, in, were his assistant coaches, so now they're coaching the girls. So yeah, what was coaching staff look like? Right. Yeah. We'll get more into that as uh, yeah. as we get closer to the season starting. Obviously, the the big one will be the uh, the Cavaliers and the Zebras there that Wednesday before Thanksgiving. They always start off the season and yeah. Trying to think where we at this year, Culver. I think is it at Culver? At Culver. Yeah. So. Always look forward to that one. That one's been a, a long time uh, tradition, you know, even back to when I was playing. That was our first game of the year. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's been happening for a long time. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and Pioneer, I mean, uh, you know, McCag, but I mean, kind of what will the supporting cast look like? Yeah. Yeah. So. I mean, Drew is, Drew is one of the best players in our area. Yeah. I mean, great shooter, great, and a very good rebounder for a guard. I think he led them in rebounding last year. Yeah, obviously down there, you know, Rand's health will be a big question. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. is, if he's healthy, that's going to make a big difference for them. You know, yeah. he was not able to, to finish out the season football-wise, so yeah. I don't know if that's a long-term thing or not. So yeah. he'll he'll be a, a big key to that team. Yeah. So Oh, Valley, we need to – Stephen Acasi. Can't wait to see him and what mm-hmm. kind of improvements he's made. Yeah. And, you know, I've been uh, – Riley Shepard had a really good summer. We'll see if that can translate yeah. to, the, to the regular yeah. season there as well. You mm-hmm. know, he's – what six five six six really really good outside shooter mm-hmm. so yeah you know you throw that in there so yeah it'll be an interesting uh you know obviously argus is going to have a a lot of big shoes to fill up there and right with jj uh, morris graduating yeah. and but uh you know sean richard is you know with, with him back i mean uh and luke stoltz yeah, uh richard and stoltz yeah uh, but it's uh you know how many other players is coach breeden and his staff able to develop yeah yeah all right, well, I think that'll do it for us here. We'll wrap it up. We'll come back next week. We'll talk some more sports. And, uh, you know, it's it's kind of odd. It just seemed like that, that fall season just flew by, didn't it? I mean, you know, just, we were anticipating the first week of football, and yeah. here we are done with football. Yeah. It's crazy. And, you know, I'm not looking forward to, you know, that winter season going that fast. I, I kind of enjoy the basketball part of the season. and. Mm-hmm. Hopefully it doesn't fly by and you know, we get a chance to kind of enjoy it a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Uh, there's always that – we always talk about the narrative of basketball, how players improve and how teams improve over the course of the year. I think that's what we both enjoy about it a lot, yeah. whether it's a girls team or a boys team. Yeah, because, you know, every year you got new new players and new positions and mm-hmm. you kind of get a chance to see them kind of blossom and, and mm-hmm. grow. And it's kind of like a mm-hmm. – Plant a flower in a flower yeah. bed, you know, you get to, to see what they turn into. And yeah. Before you know it, they graduate mm-hmm. and they move on. So, all right. Well, let's, let's wrap it up. We'll come back next week. We'll talk some more sports with Val. Thanks for tuning in and uh, have a good afternoon.